क्या हाल है क्या हाल है क्या हाल है मैं हूँ आपका दोस्त आपका साथी डीजे मोदी ऑन फन एशिया रेडियो मोदी अख्तर एंड वेलकम टू येट अन अदर एडिशन ऑफ अ लीडर्स जर्नी एंड प्रोड्यूस बाय वैशाली ठक्कर एंड मोदी अख्तर एंड वी ब्रिंग टू यू दिस शो ओनली सो आप हमारे लिसनर्स ऑफ फन एशिया रेडियो सुन पाए हमारे लीडर्स को जो कि हमारे कम्यूनिटी में बहुत सारे काम बहुत सारी मेहनत करके इस लेवल पे पहुंचे हैं जहां पे हम उनसे बहुत कुछ सीख पाते हैं वंस अगेन आई एम वेरी हैप्पी टू हैव मिस्टर गोशमन भवेजा सीनियर वाइस प्रेसिडेंट एंड चीफ इंफॉर्मेशन ऑफिसर एट टेक्सिस इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स टी आई Gurshman Baveja is senior vice president and chief information officer of Texas Instruments. Broad information technology experience in manufacturing, supply chain and e-commerce. Multiple patent disclosures and journal and conference publications in the areas of computer integrating, manufacturing, constraint management algorithms and manufacturing process control. He received his PhD and Master's of Science degree in Industrial Engineering from Arizona State University and a Master's of Business Administration from Southern Methodist University. He works with local universities and schools to mentor children and promote STEM. And he also works with Leukemia and Lymphoma Society through cancer fundraising and advocacy activities. So before we say anything absolutely pleasure to have you sir at the studio of fun asia radio on behalf of vishali thakkar sam myself and the entire fun asia management team i would like to welcome you sir on the studios and uh, we'll start with asking you how was your childhood like where did the journey start so first let me start off with the uh, pleasure is all mine okay uh childhood uh, i was born and i grew up in india Uh, for first 22 years of my life uh, my dad was in a government service so we never stayed in one city for uh, you know more than 3 years uh, so my schooling uh, actually i never had a consistent 10 years of friends and everybody in one school uh, so to some extent right it almost taught me how to make new friends every 3 years okay and uh, uh, that's uh, that's an experience in itself uh and we you know moved around to lot of cities mainly in punjab and himachal pradesh uh and and you know big difference between living in himachal and living in punjab uh, uh the beauty of living in himachal is that you know you have mountains in your backyard uh, you can just get out and uh, actually experience the snowfall maybe by walking 20 minutes uh, from your backyard up the mountain Uh, so very wide uh, uh, you know exposure to culture uh, even though it's all india uh, just in different cities uh, different schools and then obviously right uh, i sat a little bit maybe for six straight years did my last six years of education in uh, chandigarh uh, dav college and punjab engineering college so that was my probably longest tenure as growing up childhood in one city so you know wide experiences so punjab uh, talk about punjab yesterday we had a festival and punjab and punjabi folks and punjabi culture is so lively and so warm so it's so good to know that you had so one thing i'll ask you on that journey of your three year uh, so we all if we look at life it is a journey we all go through phases growing up with our siblings then we move on to our families then our kids grow up so so very you you had that experience right from growing up so without you know wasting too much time on a, i i have some very critical questions that our listeners of fanesha would love to know about you know to to make it to the level you have made it in you know texas instruments has it been a uh, uh, being an immigrant right you you have been an immigrant lot of listeners you know we have lot of h1 listeners h1b folks lot of green card folks and we all come to this land of opportunity and we all want to make it big and and be the next level person so what are the challenges you saw becoming a c level executive at ti yeah yeah 
I think uh, let me let me give you a little bit of a Punjab 30 seconds and then we'll get into uh, some uh, high powered stuff you're talking about here. Uh, so Punjab right if you think about it's uh, you know a land of very hard working people that's my observation okay. Uh, people are very hard working uh, and people enjoy really well okay uh, festivals right uh, and and people have very very open heart okay you are welcome in anybody's house and there is a lot of food all the time uh, I, I think uh, you know being from Sikh religion I'll tell you right that uh, you know if I think about Gurdwaras and I think about how much effort goes on in doing a 7 by 24 hour langar mm. in Golden Temple in Amritsar and it never fails number one and number two it always tastes good okay that's lots of food going on and and lots of people making it it's not like there is a system there I mean there's you know but it's always good and it never ends I mean there's something there right and you can thank God for it you know that it happens that way but that system, right? It, I think it comes from people's love, is what I think. Okay, and 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 that system really, really never fails. We never, never seen where people say, okay, the longer stopped for four hours right now. It doesn't, right? And and so so that I think builds into Punjab's culture, right? And and uh, you know, there are you know, and I don't even draw the lines of Sikh Hindu, right? It's it's in the blood of Punjabis, and you know, half of us are Hindus and half of us are Sikhs, and it's it's just that culture, right? I just am amazed, right? And I, and you know, love, love and passion yeah. makes it happen. That's and right. and the process just yep. goes with the flow. Right. And and as you said, never fails any test. I have had longer. Yep. Nothing like longer. Yep. Yeah. I mean, in at home, right? You may have an extra salt in the doll, but it doesn't happen in longer. Yeah. Right now, you know, you can really play the game a little bit, right? Because you have so much going on, so you can add a little bit more and get it right. But but you get it right, right? Yeah. And it's very tasty all the time. So have you ever been a back end at the langar? Have you cooked? Have you been in the kitchen? A lot of times. And I'm not a good cook, right? But there's a lot of people to guide you, right? And there's a lot of things to do, right? You know, just from chopping vegetables to getting stuff at one place to actually, you know, heating the oil and doing stuff, right? And then cleaning up, right? So there's lots and lots of activity in the back, which is running like machine. And I've been in the back all the time. And and they're not running IT operations. They're not right? running IT operations. So how is it how is it all and flowing? It's, it, and it's working, right? It's working. I right? yeah. think about the scale of that thing, and it's working, right? I mean, I can tell you, Dallas Gurdwaras, we've been there in the back kitchen there, right? It works. I mean, e even for 500 people, serve them in two hours. That's not an exercise, and it's everything made fresh. Wow. Right. So the journey keeps going. And mostly volunteers. Most. You're not, not making mostly. any money there. Everybody's volunteer. It's not mostly. Yeah. 100% volunteers. There's zero people making money. Right. So how, how do you connect that to the world we live in? The I think, technology. I think, I think, I think they, they, they think this is right. The where, where I come to technology, and, and I was just talking to somebody outside the door here, right? You know, sometimes, right, the world of technology, technologies have complexities, right? And, and technologies are changing very fast. Every three, three years, stuff changes, right? What I learned in school as what technology was, it's not anymore, okay? But that evolution of learning of technology is not the hard part. Everybody will learn technology, okay? Even you look at yourself, right? The tools you use today at the studio versus tools you used at the studio 15 years ago were different. It's Did you go back to a two year school to go learn them? No. Right? You went home, probably spent three hours, and then you struggled, and you know, you came here and you struggled again, and about a month later, it was life, right? Yeah. So, so I think technology will evolve, okay? And, and, and so to me, right, the success in career, or in any activity, whether it's Langar in Gurdwara, or whether it's a job, right, it really boils down to, people call them soft skills, I call them power skills. It's the same thing, okay? I'm not introducing anything different, right? It, it's your ability to learn. It's your ability to solve problems. It's your ability to listen. They don't change with technology, okay? It's those basic things, I think, in my mind, right, are the root of success, whether it is Langar in Gurdwara 
or whether it is professional career life, right? Now, I think, I think, you know, we learn. I, I really want to write this down. Learn, listen, and to learn, listen. And why don't I, you know, I, 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 said something I like just it. really liked the three things. I want to take it and live it. Solve problem solving. Solve problem right? solving. Right. So, so I think, I think that they become foundational, and and over time in career, right, you keep getting better at them. And they don't, they don't lose you. They don't give up on you. They don't go away. Okay. And I don't think so. And, and you can go do research, right? If you go search problem solving, that term, that challenge existed 300 years ago. Okay. And the challenge is today. I don't think so. Microsoft Word existed three years ago, but it doesn't exist today, right? So technology will happen. Now, you know, what I tell, you know, and I, I am the same way, right? When I come out of college, right? we are exposed to the hype of technologies. So we chase them for a little bit, okay? And, and my experience in life is, right, if you continue to chase technologies as your forefront, yes, you will get better at every technology. You will do well in career, right? But the scope and breadth of your responsibilities may stall. Okay. But if you focus really on, right, the technology is given. If I don't do it, I'm no good, right? And keep building on your listening skills, learning skills, problem solving skills. I think you expand and grow and create. Wow. So in problem solving, we are talking technical and non-technical management. Think about it, right? What is problem solving? Problem I just solving. solved a problem 30 minutes exactly, ago. Exactly, right? I mean, you, 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 you walk into in front of this door, right? And the door's locked. Yeah. And you don't have the code to get in. That's a problem, yeah. right? What do you do? Now, in this case, right, you probably called somebody and you knew somebody, right? So, so it was very defined and clear, right? But in the end, the problem solving is simple, right? It's about, you know, defined understanding what it is understanding the solutions which will solve it, right? And, and you just solve it, right? I mean, it took 10 seconds there, but some things, sometimes it takes two years, right? I, I'll give you a story. I mean, this will be a, this is a powerful story. I think you can relate to problem solving. So right. once again, Dallas, I just want to let you know, listeners, you know, we are listening to our very, very successful South Asian business, uh, senior vice president of Texas Instrument, Gushman, Bhaveja, if I'm not saying it correctly, please correct me, sir. And he has, he's been working at TI currently as a C-level executive. It takes a lot to get there. Please uh, share your story, okay. sir. Okay. So the problem solving is what we were talking about, right? The root of this thing, right? If you think about this, right? I am in the middle of doing my PhD defense, right? And it's about 10 minutes left. The one person I'm very scared of that if he asks a question, it'll be a trumping question, has not asked a question. In the last 10 minutes, he volunteers to ask a question. And he said to me very simply, he said, I'm going to give you three choices. I just want you to pick one of these choices as answer to the question. So you have to listen to the instructions. You can't start talking. It's very clear. Three answers, pick one. And the three answers are 0, 50, and 100. That's all the three answers are. So his question is, now he's going to tell you a question, right? His question is, you have done an outstanding job of describing a problem because PhD is about research and problem solving. I just want to know, what is the probability that your solution will actually be used by the world, big word, right? Everybody in the world to solve this problem. And I want you to pick 0% probability, 50% probability, and 100% probability. Very tricky question. Zero means you got no confidence. 100 means prove it. You have too much confidence. 50 means, yeah, you're just cruising along. Yeah. So everything is wrong to some extent, right? So I asked for permission to explain my answer before I pick the choice. Okay. So I listened to the instructions, but I didn't like the instructions. So I asked for modification. So I'm trying to solve the problem, right? So he agreed. He says, yeah, you can talk about something, right? So, so we got into, and I said, look, think this way. This is a hard problem. You agreed. This is an effective problem for what to solve. You agreed. So what I'm telling you is this, right? That my work in this problem for the last two years has shown people a path to address this problem. If more work's done at the end and this path is a dead end, that is still a huge learning to solve this problem. Wow. Because then people should not follow this path to solve this problem. They should try to find something else because it's a complicated problem. So I have added a lot of value to solving this problem. Do you still need an answer? And he said, no. Wow. So, so again, a typical problem listener yep. would say they have, this, you know, being in that scenario, 
they would tend to pick a number. Yes, fast, right? Right. I'm I'm one of them. Maybe I'm not the yeah, yeah. the kind who patience. Would, yeah, patience, right? You want to be quick and fast and answer, right? And and you do have a good explanation too. You'll have an explanation, right? There's nothing wrong with it, right? But the reality of life is, right, that that's a complicated problem. You got to solve through it, and there will be multiple attempts to solve it, multiple ways to solve it. It's not just a code in the door, right? <laughs> So that's that's what I talk about. I mean, how do you kind of build the depth of that? Lovely, lovely. So, so again, as as and we are going to have this podcast recorded and played multiple times. So I want our listeners to take some meat. You know, whatever I've heard so far is amazing. But the questions we have, right? C level exec is not an easy place to be in corporate America or wherever in the world. It it takes a lot. You know, I. we all have all lived it 20 30 years mostly the immigrants that have been here they have done 10 20 30 how how did you what is your advice to I them i think i think i think simple okay number one let your work do the talking let your output do the talking okay and never never stop learning never stop learning let the work do your talking okay and and focus on actually trying to make sure right that the foundational things which are going to stay with you are always expanding and you go back to your roots okay my my passion right i mean you you talked about immigrant you talked about foreigner right i think i think you lead why inclusion right we can talk about that we are foreigners right but let's think about right how much do we include everybody else right so in the end right what i'm proud of from ti perspective is really culture of inclusion Okay, and that really, really makes everything work very well. Okay, so that's how I sort of look at it. And very good point. I'll ask you a few corporate level things on the along the same lines, right? Inclusion is great. You know, having you know the talent is great. But still, you if you live in any technology world, there is politics, mm -hmm. right? How do you overcome and not think, hey, is it because I'm an immigrant or I'm friends to this person? How do you get to the ladder? Yeah. Yeah. up there right after two levels three levels it's yeah i think i think uh, dj moody that i think the key to me is right that uh, you can use those thing to convince yourself that everybody's against you everybody's trying to get you right that's an easy answer when that happens okay i think my challenge to everybody is look inside look in the mirror right to make change to what you don't like what can you control what can you do okay you can't change everybody okay but you can change yourself you can adjust and there could be a chance when you know you've tried everything honestly really which i think it's very difficult to get there and it still doesn't work right then you give up and you go somewhere else right but, so but don't be a victim don't be a victim right you got to you control your life you got to change yourself that's the best thing you control and the easy thing you can handle the excuse code is it's everybody else's fault love it right? so don't blame the economy don't blame the culture don't blame the boss yep. look inside yeah. and grow yep. thank you so next thing 20 years if you have to go back 20 years in your career what would you change uh i think i think uh, uh, one thing i will change is right that uh, i have learned the power of mentoring the hard way i wish somebody would have told me how powerful it is to be vulnerable to a mentor early on in my career i sort of being an introvert coming out of india you know indian education system taught me a lot right it was all about i'm going to go learn and solve it I think if I would have made myself vulnerable a little bit more, exposed myself to somebody I could have learned from and had that fearless conversation, I think I'll do it more. It took me a little while to get there and learn the power of mentoring and following people. Wow. That's very solid. Very thank you. Uh, next thing, you know, again we are dealing with Delta. Covid has been you know working from home it's important that we have broken down a comp you know work and office life balance and you know tips and effective you know how do you manage time effectively with covid with home with family with everything else boss pinging you night day dogs barking 
I think uh, a, a very tough, tough situation. Okay, tough question to ask, and I will probably want to bring a little bit of a personal situation at the end. But uh, I think if I look in generalities, right, um, the COVID, when it happened, and I'm talking from you know, just experience in TI, right, we went from working from home, uh, working from office to a home in 24 hours. Right? Wow. Friday night, Monday morning, nobody comes, right? Because it just, you know, went fast, right? And, uh, and when that happened, right, uh, the positive is, right, you save two hours of drive time, okay? I mean, you don't have to go, you know, from north of uh, Plano yeah. in Allen down to, you know, 635, 75 with the traffic and all that stuff, right? Uh, but the bad part is, right, that you don't know when to start and when to stop, right? You, you, you get out of your bed, uh, you know, you, you, you want to go walk a little bit and exercise, but here you just go into the study and the computer is on and, you, you know, you don't have to go dress up, get in a car, go somewhere, right? So the, the boundaries are very blurry, right? Same thing happens on the end of the day, right? Even though, you know, uh, you don't have to drive, right? And you're right, but, but you don't have to stop either. <laughs> so that's the, that's the challenging part, right? But I think a lot of that is you have to really prioritize things in your life. You have to think about what it is, right? And, and, and then the other problem is, right, you can't go anywhere, you're here anyway, so why worry about going to the other room and you can, you know, I'm busy right now, right? But you have to prioritize, right? Because your family's not going either, anywhere either, right? So everybody has now their own limitations. But I think to me, there what it was down is discipline. Really, really keep up front in front of you, right? That you have a family, work ends at some point, right? And now, you know, the emergencies are gonna come, right? Things will happen, exceptions will happen and all that stuff, right? But you have to start to build a little bit of discipline in your life and think very carefully, right? What do you have to do? What's important? Uh, you know, before COVID, right? I know I got to go teach soccer, you know, to my kids and I'm the coach. So we know that at 5 o'clock you go on the ground, but there's no 5 o'clock here. So work ends at 4.15 on that day when we got to go there and you got to be in the ground, right? Here there's none of that, right? You don't have to go in the other room and talk to the kids because, you know, there's no, it's kind of look like same. Right? Yeah. So you have to draw those lines carefully, right? And and I think I think people struggle with drawing those lines. I struggle with drawing those lines, right? Uh, and I think I think, uh, but this is not ending soon. Uh, it may end hybrid. It may end, uh, you know, partially work. I don't know, you know, three months of open, two months of close. Who knows, right? It's been a long time. So I think we have to really, really carefully think about right what's important in life. Hmm. Um, and I, I, I want to, you know, take you to a little bit of my family journey. Yep. Okay we have three right? minutes okay. and I have one last quick thing, okay. but go ahead. Yeah. You go ahead. Yeah. First. So, 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 you know, we, we, we lived through COVID, even pre-COVID with a very serious uh, illness for our child, um, a, as you know, and we lost her uh, in the middle of a little bit before COVID at a very early age, right? Uh, just a 22 year old kid, right? My daughter. And I think, I think when that happens, right? And then, then COVID close happened. Right? I mean, so we were kind of close before in the hospitals and trying to work all that stuff, right? Um, it's hard, okay? And with not, so the, the two things, three things help you through it. One, faith. Two, as much as friends can win your life with that closed environment, whether it's Zoom calls, you know, you increase your bubble a little bit, you know, they come in, spend time with you, talk with you. Um, amazingly, her dance team became our extended family. Right? Those kids were always with us, right? They will see us, right? And then the last thing is, right, that we wanted to learn from it and teach others. And that's where I got so connected with Lakumia Society, uh, either through fundraising or through t talking to parents who are going through that experience, right? And, and so that became part of our life, right? To how do I use that learning? Because I know what it takes. I know how hard it is, right? And, and you know, can it be less hard for somebody else, right? That's where you start to focus your life on, try to give back to the community to some extent, right? And I will encourage, I will challenge everybody listening, uh, you know, get part of that journey, help me. I'm gonna ask for the help, okay? Uh, we are doing that for my daughter, right? And. DJ Modi will figure out some way to give how to connect me, right? Uh, if you, you want to give my cell phone number, anybody want to text me about to have a discussion. If you're going through it, want some help, that's great. You want to come help, that's great. And, and I'm okay to just share my cell phone number. Oh, okay. all, all right? Anybody can text me. It's 972-693-7256. Let's join together. There is a lot of research needed. There are a lot of 
medical research needed there a lot of help needed a lot of mentoring needed a lot of mentoring needed to make this right i mean one of the programs you started right people who have recovered out of it how do we help them go through education fast so that they can right because they have their own limitations and struggles right so there's lots of good stuff there's lots of help needed on behalf of Vishali Thakkar and Sam Thakkar they have so many great things to say about you thank you so much for being here on our show this evening